Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English and today we are looking at question five. Question five, guys, is 50% of the GCSE. And when it comes to question five, there's so many misconceptions. Everyone has an opinion. Now, normally I give you guys pre-planned story ideas. This video is about what if you don't want to pre-plan. Everything education. Tuition for maths. English and science. Whether or not you pre-plan your plot or whether or not you don't, you all need to make sure that the other stuff that's included in your exam is pre-planned. Now, what am I talking about? Guys, paper one, question five. It's about writing a story or describing the picture. It's not about setting. It's not about character. It's not about plot. It's not about any of that kind of stuff. Now, how do we know that, guys? Because the mark scheme behind me on the board clearly tells us that. The mark scheme on the board, guys, clearly says that when it comes to this question, your writing must be interesting. Your writing must have a lot of big words, ambitious words. Your writing must have good quality language devices. Your writing must have structured features, must have commas and full stops, must have punctuation, must have good spelling including having lots of vocabulary. Where does it talk about setting? Where does it talk about plot? Where does it talk about character? It doesn't. Then take it further. If you go to the exam board's own website, this is the key they use. Look at what they use. Vocabulary, devices, structure, sentence, punctuation. Now, why am I saying all of this? Whether or not you pre-plan your story or whether or not you don't, as a minimum, as a GCSE year 11 student, you must make sure you have this in your writing. I promise you guys, if you don't have this, you will fail and you deserve to fail. And just in case, guys, you think, sir, are you sure? Are you sure, 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 sure? Have a look, guys. This is a 40 out of 40 story. 40 out of 40. We got 24 and 16. Which, gave, which gives it 40 out of 40. Should you ever require English, maths or science classes, do head over to everythingeducation.co.uk. I teach all of the English classes myself and the maths and science classes are taught by fully qualified teachers. Upon joining, you have access to the student portal where you can talk to me, submit your homework and get your feedback. So guys, should you wish to join, head over to everythingeducation.co.uk. Now this student of mine, her dad was so happy with her paper, he paid AQA and they sent the paper back to us. Just look at what they marked her for. Now, this student, she did pre-plan her question five because she pre-planned it with me using the Amazon story, the Amazon kit package. But look at what the exam board is marking her on. Let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, have a look guys. They marked her on her spelling, they marked her on her vocabulary, they marked her upon her writing. Then they marked her upon her full stops and commas and her punctuation. Then they marked her on her sentence forms. Remember, 40 out of 40. Look at what they are marking her on. Then they marked her on her language devices. Then they marked her on her spelling and her vocabulary. Then they marked her on her language devices. Then they marked her on her sentence forms. Then they said an overall comment we are happy with her work. We think her work is high in level. Why? Because her spelling was good. Her vocabulary was good. Her sentence forms were good. Her punctuation was good. Her, her language devices were good. Her vocabulary was good. And the way she wrote it was really, really well done. And then the second examiner marked her work. And he or she said that I agree the marks are reasonable. She got 40 out of 40. It was not about her character. It was not about her plot. It was not about her setting. It was all about her language like it should be. Now, whether or not you pre-plan your plot, worst case scenario, you can probably think of an idea on the day of your exam. However, guys, there is no way, and I mean it, there is no way you can think of all this on the day of your exam at a high level. It's impossible. You got 45 minutes. You're gonna, if, if you're not pre-planning, you're gonna spend about five minutes planning your plot, planning your character, planning your setting. 
it will take you ages if you have not thought about your vocabulary, your language, your punctuation before your exam and you plan on making it up in your exam, good luck to you because it will take you about five minutes to think of your character, your plot, your setting. Then it'll probably take you at least 10 minutes to come up with language devices, punctuation, vocabulary, sentence forms, structure. That's 15 minutes gone. That leaves you 30 minutes to write your grade nine story. Good luck to you, because even I can't do that. You need to make sure before you walk into your exam, no matter what happens, that you have pre-planned your language, your vocab, your punctuation, your structure. And let me give it to you guys. The whole point of this video is for me to give you everything you need. Forget the top part. Can you guys see that? Let me zoom in as much as I can. All right, guys, forget the top part. Forget this, right? I'm assuming you guys are not going to pre-plan the top part. But as a minimum, make sure every paragraph has this. Every paragraph you too. Now, the red is my vocabulary. The blue is my punctuation. The green are my language devices. And the beautiful pink is my structure. So, paragraph one. I chose the word sad and I'm going to replace it with the word melancholy. I chose the word big and I'm going to replace it with the word colossal. I chose the word tired. I'm going to replace it with the word exasperated. This is for me to get the mark for vocabulary. Paragraph two. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Paragraph one for my punctuation. I will use exclamation mark. I will use a simile pathetic fallacy. And in this paragraph, I will have a one word sentence. Guys, that answer, that got 40 out of 40, this is exactly what I did with her. This is exactly what I did with her. I gave her the ingredients and I said, make sure you use it like a robot. Paragraph two, rather than using happy, we're going to use euphoric. Rather than using lazy, we're going to use lackadaisical. Rather than saying bad, we're going to use abominable. We're going to use brackets. We're going to have personification. We're going to have a metaphor and we're going to have a list. A list is four or more. I went to the shops and I purchased egg, milk, bread, chocolate. That counts as a list. Paragraph number three, rather than, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now in between paragraph one and paragraph two, I'm going to put a one word sentence. Now paragraph number three, rather than using small, I will use the word minuscule. For scary, I will use petrifying. For strong, I will use tenacious. I will use a semicolon, which is used to replace the word and. I will use speech marks, onomatopoeia, zoomorphism on my language devices. And because I got speech marks, my structural device will be dialogue. Now, paragraph number four, we should all use, rather use the word angry, use indignant. For confused, use befuddled. For evil, use malevolent. For a colon, use, um, replace the word because with the colon. For punctuation, hyperbole, chromomorphism, guys. Chromomorphism is when you give a human the features of a non-human. It's the opposite of personification. And we're going to include a one word sentence. Paragraph number five, rather than using the word calm, we're going to use the word zen. Rather than using the word good, we're going to use the word benevolent. For ugly, we'll use grotesque. we use a question mark, sibilance, oxymoron, one line paragraph. But this plan, this plan, it gives us a chance of getting a good grade in our exam. So for paper one, question five, I always say it. We're aiming for five main paragraphs with a one line paragraph there and a one line paragraph there. So in total, we're doing seven paragraphs, but out of the seven, two are one liners and then five main paragraphs. Every single paragraph that we do, no matter what happens, has vocabulary, has structure, has punctuation and has language devices, because this is what we are marked upon. I don't care if you're going to pre-plan your story or not. I'm not here to battle with you guys. Sir, my school told me this, my school told me that, my dog said this, my cat said this. Do whatever you want when it comes to your idea. But you must make sure that in your exam, you have this stuff. Even for those of you who are pre-planning your plot, a pre-planned plot with rubbish or no language is a recipe for disaster. You need to have this stuff in your work. This, guys, copy it. Use mine. So in paragraph one, do that. Paragraph two, do this. Three, four, five. Now, you might say to me, oh, sir, 
It's nice, but how would it look into practice? Have a look guys. I wrote an opening paragraph using that exact structure. Now, this story that I planned on the board over here, I've not really put it up on YouTube, but it's basically about an alien and the spaceship crashes and they land upon Earth and they get kind of kidnapped by scientists. That's what this story is about, the one that I planned over here. But in paragraph one, I said that I would use all of this. Now, I wrote out this entire question five. Now, we're not going to read the entire question five, but let's just go over the first paragraph and the one line paragraph, just so you can see that even I did everything that I said I would. Now, go have a look. The wind howled through the night and icy rain was flashing down from the sky above. Wow, what a lovely opening. I have my pathetic fallacy. Thick, swollen clouds choked the sky. Thunder growled in the distance. Now, I've got other language devices that are not on the list. That's absolutely fine. But I'm making sure that as a minimum, I have everything that was on that list. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? A low, ominous sound sent vibration through the UFO. In the distance, lightning briefly illuminated the skeletal trees. I could feel... I could feel the cold biting deep through my coat and skin clinging to me like an unwanted and so unwanted shadow exclamation mark so i've got my pathetic fallacy i've got my simile i've got my punctuation it was the kind of evening that made people hurry home without looking up shoulders hunched footsteps quick and feeling exasperated that's my first vocabulary anything to escape the wrath of the colossal that's my second vocabulary Storm that lay ahead. Plop. That's my one word sentence. A pigeon flew with careless grace and let loose in the wrong time and place. Before I could comprehend the situation, my sight became compromised. What did we hit? Or what hit us? Within seconds, we were spiraling down from the sky. An overwhelming feeling of melancholy vocabulary swept over me. What was previously a distant sight now looked closer than ever. I was heading into the ocean. That's the end of my one line paragraph. So that was guys, I wrote out that all and my one line paragraph. And I wrote out the entire story. Every single paragraph, the heart, I, I, I marked it to make sure that what I put on my plan, I used it the whole way through. Why? Because I'm holding myself to account. Now, let's say for example, I'm doing a GCSE exam. I can show the examiner, look, Look at your mark scheme, look at your mark scheme and look at my work. Every single paragraph, I've got what you've said the mark scheme. Every single paragraph, I've got at least minimum three language devices. Every paragraph, I've got two language, sorry, three big words, two language devices. I've got structured devices, I've got sentence forms, I've got punctuation. Everything you put on that mark scheme, I made sure that I included in my writing. Guys, I'm begging you, please pre-plan pre as a minimum what you're going to put in your story. Because if you don't pre-plan this bottom bit, it is hard. How can you think of big words on the day of your exam if you don't know big words? How can you think of language devices if the only ones you know are simile and total question, simile and metaphor? How? It's impossible. How can you think of punctuation if you only know how to use exclamation mark and question mark? You simply can't do it. And you're going to end up just writing a story like you're in year seven. This is a GCSE exam. Get this down, guys. You can literally copy mine. And I beg you guys, before someone says, oh, but sir, is it plagiarism? Please, please cut me the... I'm not going to swear, but cut me some slack. These are just language devices. These are just words. You will take them, you will use them the way you want to. Guys, I beg you, for your GCSE exam, if you're not going to pre-plan your plot, as a minimum, as a minimum, you must make sure you know at least 10 language devices because you must have two per paragraph. As a minimum, you must know 10 ambitious words two per paragraph. I've done three here, but as a minimum, you must know 10. 
punctuation. You must know as a minimum five excluding commas and full stops. When it comes to structure, you must have at least one per paragraph. But guys, you've got to make sure. You need to make sure that you pre-plan your paper one, question five, with this stuff at the bottom. Use mine, tweak mine, but have a plan. And all you would do in your exam, right, is this. So let's say I remove all this for a second. All you would do in your exam, guys, is the following. If you're not pre-planning, all you would do in your exam is, because you would have learned all of this off by heart, in your exam, you know, okay, paragraph one, I've got simile, pathetic fallacy, colossal, whatever, whatever, whatever. Paragraph two, I've got this, this, this. In your exam, on the day of your exam, all you would do is, okay, based upon the question, paragraph one, this happens, paragraph two, this, paragraph three, paragraph four, paragraph five, and then you're good to go writing. And for those of you who are pre-planning your idea, who are pre-planning your story, maybe you're going to use one of mine, that's fine, but make sure you don't just focus on your idea, make sure you really focus on your language, your structure, your vocabulary, and so on. All right, guys, this is how you plan paper one, question five. Five paragraphs, two one-line paragraphs, language structure, vocabulary, punctuation throughout your essay. And then you put this onto a decent plot and grade nine is promise, I promise, I promise, I promise, it is waiting for you. All right, guys, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.